a pentagonal prism 25 mm sides of base and 60 mm axis length rests on hp on one of its edges of the base which is inclined to vp at 30 degree draw the projections of the prism when the axis is inclined to hp at 40 degree so we have a pentagonal pyramid of 25 mm sides of base and 60 mm axis length rests on hp on one of its edges of the base so i can answer the first two questions where it is resting and how it is resting it is resting on hp and it is resting on one of the edge of the base so i should have a edge of the base of a pentagon of 25 mm to my right hand side i should have it to my right hand side so the solution goes like this first is i have to draw a xy line vphp that is the vertical plane and the horizontal plane then i have to draw a pentagon such a way that i get a edge towards my right hand side to my right hand side so i have a edge of 25 mm each where one edge it is resting on one edge and that edge i am taking it to my right hand side then i am going to to dimension it with 25 mm then i am going to name it here uh, i'm just uh, changing the naming bit where we are taking it instead of a1 b b1 c c1 i'm going to take it as p q r s t and a b c d e and uh, by mistake uh, there is a clockwise uh, dimensions but we are going to do it in anti clockwise dimensions only so you don't worry about the dimensions only understand the things what we are doing the problem understand the problem so i have drawn the pentagon in such a way that i have a pentagon on my right hand side along with that i have dimensioned it the next the main important part is to find out the midpoint of this prism to find the midpoint important to find the midpoint of this prism so for which to find always a midpoint of this uh, pentagon what we are going to do is from one corner i am going to draw a line to the midpoint of the opposite edge always to find out the midpoint of this pentagon we are drawing a line from one corner to the opposite side of midpoint of the opposite side on the similar ground i am drawing the next corner it is starting from this corner to the opposite side midpoint i am drawing a line which is intersecting this line a line which is intersecting which is emerging from one corner to the opposite and the one where it meets that will be our center point the one where it meets that will be our center point so if i draw draw two line that is more than enough to understand the center point where i am starting i repeat i start drawing from one corner to the opposite side where it is intersecting this opposite side that is to the midpoint of this side then mm. i need to know the dot here so again from one corner to the opposite okay. side point i am going to draw it where in which we are going to get the where in which we are going to get the midpoint so this is our midpoint where i am going to name it as o1 and o2 next is i am going to project it upwards all the lines from uh, one corner to the xy line the from the other corner to the xy from here to the xy line next from the axis we know the axis length it is 60 mm so i am drawing the axis length of 60 mm as soon as i draw that i am going to dimension it with 60 mm 
then i'm going to project this uh, prism and finalize this whole thing the line which i'm going to draw it is 60 this line and then this line then i'm going to name it this is from here i'm going getting p so it is this is p dash from here i'm getting q dash from here from this point i'm getting t dash t is visible so it is outside the bracket q is not visible because it is merging with t so it is in the bracket then I have S, yes, it is visible, so S dash is outside the bracket. Then I have R, R, which is within the coinciding with S. Yes. So, S yes, R dash is within the bracket. On the same note, I have A, A dash here. Then I have E dash outside the bracket, B dash within the bracket. Then I have O1 dash on top and O2 dash at the bottom. So O1 is outside the bracket, O2 is inside the bracket here. See on, this, on the similar ground, I have D dash outside the bracket because D dash, this point is visible and C is not visible. So C is within the bracket and D dash is uh, outside the bracket. So with this, we complete this dimensioning of this uh, first one. Then I have in my second phase of the problem, I have a axis which is inclined to 40 degree to HP. I have an axis inclined to 40 degree to HP. So I draw an axis where I'm going to convert this axis inclination to the base inclination. So again, it will be 90 minus 40. So I'll be getting this angle as 50 degree. So I'm going to draw a 50 degree line, then measure from C dash to B dash I measure it from this side to this side. Then I measure from C dash to A dash. Then cut this down, draw 90 degree line here. And these lengths are nothing but it is 60 mm again. When I know it is 60 mm, close this rectangle. So I've completed this rectangle by understanding these lengths from this front view and also the axis which has been uh, measured from this C dash to O2 dash and I have drawn an axis line and I have extended the same axis line to my XY line and then I have been, it has been uh, named with 40 degrees because the axis, axis is 40 degree to HP. That is what it is given in the question. Then uh, we are going to same replicate it, the names, whatever namings we have done it here the same replication will be in this position. The next part is we are going to project these lines from the top view to the side. Then we are going to project from the bottom face. This is our bottom face. The, then this is our top base. This bottom base I'm going to project from A dash to A. A is coming from this end and this is point A. B is from here and B is from here. Then I have E from here and E from here. Then I have O2 from this end and O2 from this end. Then I have C from here and C from here and D from here and D from here. So I've got all five points to know. Then I'm going to uh, name those five points that is A, B, C, D and E. Then I'm going to project from the top base. When I project from the top base, again it is P from here, P from here, Q from here, and Q from here. Then I have T from here and T from here, O1 from this end, O1 from this end, and R from this end, and R from this end. So S from here and S from here. As soon as I get it, I'm going to name it. Once I name it, I'm going to join the outside part. As I said yesterday, the first thing what we are going to do is join the outside part. So this is my top base. This is my top base. I'm seeing it from the top. When I see it from the top, I can see this top base full. So I join from P to Q, Q to R, R to S. S to T and T to P. This whole thing, I'm going to close it first. 
then the outside part that is q to b q to b wherever it is i don't mind it but q to b is the outside part i close it b to a is the outside part i close it a to e is the outside part and e to e is t is the outside part so this is the first thing what i'm going to do these lines which i have drawn will never ever be dotted will never ever be dotted dotted means hidden lines the outside face that is the top base will never be hidden and these outside lines which i get here let it be a pentagon let it be a hexagon let it be a uh, square or whatever prism it is let it be anything these outside lines will never ever be dotted so for which first thing is i'm going to draw the outside lines then i'm going to check out what are the lines going out from this c this point that is c dash and d dash so the line going out from c dash d dash are it is one line from c to b and one line from c to d and one more line from c to r so it is from c to d the same line here whatever i have then c to b one line then c to r one more line so if i hold a line here a point here it is c to b i have to join this line from c to b it is one line one more line is c to d that is also a line which i need to join and one more line is from c to r so i have this is also a dotted also from this point i don't have only c i also have d here so when i see d point again line going out from d the line going out from d is d to c d to e as well as d to s so i have this what i'm going to do it this is the dotted line that is from c to b c to d d c to r that is from this point from this point i that is this point here from c to b i have one more line and from c to r i have one more line along with that i have d to c d to e and d to s again when i see these dotted lines it will always be in a y shape that is two small and one large it will be in a y shape always and this is also in a y shape and when it comes to hexagon and a pentagonal prism we get if it is resting on a edge here if it is resting on a edge in this position we get two y lines here two y lines of dotted if it is resting on a edge i get two y lines resting here if it is resting on a corner i get one y line with dotted i repeat if in a hexagon or in a pentagonal prism if it is resting on a edge that means i am having two corners if it is resting on edge i am having on my right hand side i have two corners that is c and d so these two corners from these two corners i will be having the lines so i will be having two y lines that is this one this is one and the other one is this is the second one so when it is resting on a corner i'll be having only one single y so when we when i take the further problems i'll let you know that so once this is done i have to check it all the lines i'm running with that is a b c d e and back to a and p q r e s t to p so i have drawn the top base and the bottom base also i have to check the longer edges running from p to a is 1 q to b is 2 r to c is 3 and s to d is 4 and t to e is 5 so i have five longer edges and five uh, base edges so all i have drawn so this figure is complete once that is done the next part of the problem which is given as i have 
a base edge of 30 degree to vp the base which on which it is resting that base is making an angle of 30 degree here the same base which is resting is making an angle of 30 degree in that case what i'm going to draw the edge which is resting here in this case is nothing but c and d so c and d is the edge which is resting so i have to draw a rectangle that is this rectangle what i get here from 1 to 2 from 1 to 2 this is point 1 this is point 2 this is point 3 and this is point 4 this rectangle i have to draw here in such a way that i get c and d on this 30 degree line i have shown you by drawing it by myself in uh, in the previous problems like how to draw it so on the similar background you have to draw these lines which will be a rectangle first once i get a rectangle then i have to measure from this rectangle from this point what is this distance so i know this point from here i need to measure a so i'm going to cut a and from here i'm going to measure r as well as s and from this point i'm going to measure q so from here i'll be measuring q and from this point i'm is not visible here but we do regularly with things as well Okay, I have just projected. Initially, what I have done, we have just projected from the bottom base first, from the bottom base to this bottom base. I have A from this end and A from this end, B from this end and B from this end, then C from here and C from here d from here and d from here i have e from here and e from here once i get it i'm going to name it a b c d and e dash everything with the dash everything i'm going to name it with the with a dash, B dash, C dash, D dash, and I've joined these uh, bottom base edges from A dash, B dash to C dash, C dash to D dash. And the dash to dash. Once that is connected to the axis as well as the top base from P, Q, R, S, T, and from here it is at all those points. I'm going to name it that is P dash, Q dash, R dash s dash and t dash once that is done i'm going to join all the lines next is i have to identify the dotted lines to identify the dotted lines again i need to know the farthest point from this end to know the farthest this is again it will be a y when I see from here, the farthest point for me, it is nothing but R. From this end, 
from say suppose from my cursor from this end i am going to find out the farthest corner the farthest corner from me is nothing but r so the line going out from r will be dotted so this is my r from r i have q and from r i have s as well as from r dash i have to c dash so that is what again i get two small lines and one larger line with y and that is my dotted this is the basic thing what i'm going to consider that is the farthest point and the line going out from that farthest point will be dotted that is what we are going to consider it and with that note we complete the problem so this is the whole thing what we are doing with the problem